What's up guys, welcome back. We got a lot of stuff going on with this bike right now. I don't want to make these videos too long or wait too long in between. So we're actually going to dedicate this entire part to just the motor. Got a lot of stuff to do behind me, so let's get into it. So we got the engine cases back from the vapor blasting and I can't even begin to describe to you guys how good these things look. Like look at that. That is insane. The finish on there, it looks like it's been painted on there. Shout out to my buddy Garrett. Uh, you're the real lifesaver. So thanks for you know doing this for me and helping me out. I owe you one. But without wasting any more time, I want to get this motor together. So these are going back in the oven to heat these up. Bearings are going in the freezer. That way we'll be able to just drop them right in here. Let's get to it. Real quick, I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing with the bearings. These are the main bearings. Obviously, those are getting replaced with these. And the rest of these bearings were actually good to go. I felt them. Nothing was shaking around. They spun freely. So we're going to go ahead and reuse these. Because uh, if not, these things are like 15 bucks a piece. And yeah, that'll add up real quick. Uh, the only one we're going to replace is the uh, little clutch arm uh, bearing that's kind of shoved back in the side of the case. But other than that, these things are good to go. All right, these things are super, super hot. Uh, the first one I'm going to put in is this little one here. All right, that one's in. Well, this turned out to be a lot more stressful than I was planning on being. Uh, I was just too worried about like the cases cooling down and I was trying to hurry up and get them in there. Uh, we ended up having to press the main bearings in over on the floor press, not a big deal. Uh, a couple of these other ones we just had to tap in, but overall I think it went pretty well. And now it's time to move on to the next step, so let's get to it. So before we jump into things, I wanna show you guys what we got. Uh, brand new Weisco bottom end here. Namura Piston, Namura, Namura, well, however you pronounce that. Uh, a lot of people hate on these things. I've used them in the past and I've never had a problem with them. I mean, if these things were as bad as people said and they were blowing up every five hours, I mean, they, they wouldn't be in business. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and use that. Uh, front sprocket, we got an engine fastener kit. I just didn't wanna waste time cleaning all the other bolts. And then we got a top end gasket kit and then obviously the bottom end gasket kit. So. There's everything together. I think all of this was less than like 350 bucks, so. Oh, and real quick, I also have the, uh, the manual up here on my tablet. That way I can just go through, make sure I'm doing everything correctly, check torque specs, whatever. So uh, I got that sitting off to the side. That way I can look at it whenever I need to. So when we were pulling apart the motor, I did mention that there's some grooving here on the side of the clutch basket. It's really not that bad. Uh, I've seen a lot worse, but a lot of times what'll happen is the clutch plates will catch on that as it, they're uh, moving back and forth and your clutch will slip. I've seen it happen a lot on these RM125s and this one's actually not too bad. So what we can do is file down these edges just so they're smooth so they don't catch. Uh, then we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and do that. There it is, all done and ready to go back in the bike. Now you can kind of still see where the grooves are, but if you run your finger up and down, it is perfectly smooth. So 
Those plates won't be catching anymore, won't be slipping. This thing is ready to go back in the motor. Before we go ahead and put this clutch back in the bike, I want to make sure the plates are good. Visually they look fine, but we're going to have to measure them. I went ahead and found a free PDF manual for my bike online. And if we zoom in here, it gives us the service limit uh, for the thickness for these friction plates, which is 2.42 millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and measure these with some calipers, and if they're above that limit, then this thing's going to be good to go. All right, so this one's at 2.74, so that's above. We'll measure another location on here. We'll go about 180 degrees, and we'll measure again. So that one there is at 2.7576. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this plate is good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the bottom plate, and we'll measure that one. It's at 2.77, 180 degrees. We're gonna go ahead, and that's at 2.77 as well. 7.6. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these plates that's in the middle here and 2.76. So all of these plates are within the service limit. Service limit was 2.42 millimeters. Uh, all these are sitting around 2.75, 2.77. So I'd say about an average of 2.76. So these plates are good to go. Let's throw them in the motor. And we're supposed to measure the springs too. So the service limit on these is 37.8 millimeters. And this is right at 39.55, 39.38, 39.2. So all of these are within spec and we can go ahead and reuse them. All right, the bottom end is done. Got everything wrapped up with this. Everything went together really, really well. I'm, I'm super happy. I mean, this thing looks awesome. So I'm gonna grab the cylinder, uh, put together the power valve, get all that wrapped up, and then uh, we'll go ahead and throw the piston and the cylinder back on this thing, and, and the motor, will be it'll be done. So uh, let's keep moving. So if you guys remember, the, uh, the piston skirt had actually broken off, and we were lucky enough that the bore of the cylinder did not get affected at all. Uh, it really does look great in there. Uh, we're still going to go ahead, run the hone through it, just a few passes, maybe two, three, four seconds, if that. That was all it took, just a few passes, nothing too crazy. I didn't want to take a whole lot off in there. I think it looks really, really good. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this power valve back together. All right, time to put some hoses on this carb here. I just went to Rocky Mountain and got the, uh, just some Honda OEM tube. That's like the only place they could find the pink. And it was actually pretty inexpensive. And then I just got the, uh, the smaller diameter for the bottom of the bowl here. So let's go ahead, let's get this stuff cut and uh, we'll get it ready.
part of the video here. I'm looking at this motor right now and this thing looks awesome. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Um, and if you guys are you know, enjoying what you're seeing, please go ahead, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you guys in the next video when we put this motor into the frame. Oh yeah, and don't forget to vote for me in April. Thanks guys. Thank <laughs> you.